Hello, since I'm at home, let me do a little check-in for uh, something I haven't done in a while, which is my Canadian short stories uh, reviews, which are, this is from Need Something to Read While You Isolate. Here are 73 Canadian short stories short stories available online, which were curated by uh, Kevin Hardcastle. I originally got this from CBC, but they took it from his, uh, his website, kevinhardcastle.com. Uh, God, back in uh, March the 30th, short stories to read while you're holed up. Uh, and um, this is my kind of my second second batch of them. I've put them on a, a little ebook here. And this is the first one of this batch, which is Complicit by uh, Kaladia Venus Hassan, uh, which was originally published in the Puritan magazine. Uh, yeah, Complicit. Uh, it's a story of uh, Afghan uh, immigrants um, specifically focusing on uh, a mother, uh, Nora, which uh, she's anglicized her name from Nora to uh, Nora. I think it's Nora. Uh, that's my phonetic reading of some clueless white guy. Uh, and her relationship with her daughter, her um, kind of adult daughter. She works, her daughter, Sarah, who works at a uh, convenience store. And uh, Nora is a, a nurse working at a kind of a mental health unit. Uh, and sort of her relationship both with um, her daughter and also with her um, her husband, who she sort of, there was, there was uh, an arra arranged marriage. Uh, the guy had apparently had kind of plans to become an engineer, but soon after they got married, he gave that up uh, and is just sort of working kind of a fairly kind of a low, low, low kind of maintenance job, not, not, nothing too demanding. Uh, and there's a bit of frustration there because they've ended up uh, living in the same kind of uh, housing development, pro housing project, uh, where uh, this guy's sisters are, have also lived, which is, is other excuse for like, this is why we can't move out of here uh, to like a better place in the suburbs is because, you know, then I'd have to, you know, help out, help out with these sisters as well. And these sisters who kind of keep an eye on, um, on Nura and Sarah as well. Um, so the, kind of the key things in this book are, uh, first, uh, uh, Nora gets a call from the owner of the, uh, of this convenience store, which has gotten robbed. And he's like, oh, I've, I went through all the security tapes and, uh, to kind of like, you know, see if I can track the guy down. Uh, but I also found something else, which I think is concerning. And I don't know if I want your daughter working for me anymore. And I think you should see, and I don't want to tell you. So he shows her and it's, uh, what it is, is it's a tape of her daughter at this convenience store, basically really, really bored. And at one point she gets up and she goes over to the kind of the porno magazines that this store sells because, you know, basically it's porno magazines, cigarettes. These are the things that, that actually they sell. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. They're just basically covered in dust that never sell. She goes over, she, she gets one of the magazines, she leaves through it and, uh, probably not thinking about the fact that she's on camera. She um, slips her hand under her, under her, under the kind of counter under herself and kind of, and has, and kind of pleasures herself uh, to it. And then, you know, hides the magazine and that goes on. But it's like, Gus is like, oh, I don't, I think James Gus is like, oh, I don't know if I want her working for me. And, um, you know, he, she does, um, uh, Nora does everything she can to kind of basically hush this up to say, oh, I got her to quit the job because I want her to focus more on work. Basically everything she can because the husband is uh, very controlling, um, is, you know, can be borderline ab abusive. So she's doing everything to kind of protect her, 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 uh, her daughter's kind of privacy that way. So we have that part of the story. And then the other half of the story is that, yeah, she's working at this mental health place and uh, a um, kind of a minor television star comes in and it quickly becomes apparent that Honora's sort of got a, got a crush on, on this guy who's been kind of admitted for suicidal ideation. Uh, it can be a difficult patient, but she's like, she totally kind of takes him up under her, under her wing, does all this stuff, kind of babies him along, you know, whether it's because of mental illness or whether he's feeling he feels entitled because he's 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 a movie star or not a movie star but a television star. It's kind of not really. You don't see. I mean, she seems to be the only one who treats him with enough kind of you know fandom that he he does actually take it. 
But at the final bit of the story, he's had to be um, put in intensive care uh, and is, I guess, really drugged up. She goes in after being off because she this happened while she was away. She goes into his room and kind of, well, he's completely out of it. And she kind of cuddles up to him, kind of puts her thing over. It. Obviously, there's a bit of her own fantasy life there. And she's not, she doesn't usually work in the intensive care unit. Uh, and um, as she's kind of up on the bed with the guy who's completely unconscious and kind of putting her leg on, over him, she kind of looks around the thing, looks at this, look, notes this, and then notes the other thing that she was not aware of that the intensive care unit has, which is a security camera, which is filming all of this because I guess you're probably doing it to quote, protect the patient. They've lost that right of privacy in, in the name of um, being monitored at all times, but she's been monitored. And I guess it's the, it's the thing of, she was, you kind of go with the title of like, she's kind of complicit in her own, her daughter's invasion of privacy from, from the grocery store owner who should have probably just kind of gone, mm, okay, I don't want to see that. And just gone by it, not done anything with it. Uh, and now she's probably caught in her own thing of what's, what's obviously is professional malfeasance. You're, you're, you're taking advantage of your position to be inappropriate with a patient, especially, you know, in like, not like whether the patient was, you know, unconscious or not, she's been caught in this and there's a part of it that you makes you feel like, oh, that's crappy for her. But there's another part of you goes like, no, you don't want nurses taking advantage of the position and cuddling up to a patient like that. So, um, but then it's the, there's the complicity of, are you being complicit with a, of a thing of like, yes, everyone should be filmed at all times. <laughs> I'm doing this review as a, as a thing. So it was, uh, at, when I first read it, it was just like, oh, what does this like, you know, suddenly we, we, we go from the first half, which is sort of all focused on the daughter and cum culminating in her being filmed. And it's like, when we get into the, into her and at the, at the hospital, it's like kind of confused. like, well, why are we doing this? This seems like an odd kind of tangent. How long is this going on? But suddenly she looks up and there's the camera and the story ends. Cause like, bang, that's the point. That is the point of the story. Um, so it's kind of a good story on that. I the, the thing of kind of, of filming of uh, what should our expectations of privacy are. Uh, sexuality and privacy um you know so many of people's lives are are on camera now people put their sexual lives on camera now but um you know where are the places that you should be able to expect that privacy both both women were filmed in places where they didn't really they were public they're either a public place like a, a the the uh this convenience store or uh, a hospital in a, in a, in a, in a, in a uh, patient's, patient's room where the patient had lost that um, right to privacy, I guess. But, you know, how much, how much, uh, I mean, professionally as a, as a mental health nurse, you didn't have any, she shouldn't have had any expect, expectations of privacy in that. But you, it's funny how quick, how easily you can, it's like if she had known she'd been filmed, she would have acted differently but the very fact that she didn't know she was being filmed and she acted that way is kind of uh rather damning in itself i mean it's i guess it's a human thing you you, you got the sense of this woman's kind of pretty frustrated not love a, a loveless marriage um that she she had and there's also the kind of the 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 fact that um there there's there's a line early on where it's like it's talking about all these uh these, this housing development where all the house, all the, uh, all the buildings basically kind of, they turn and they look at each other and they've got these eyes and you know that in this living condition, that one of the eyes that is indeed on her is the, uh, these, these, uh, sisters of, of the, of the father spying on them, watching them. And indeed at one point, apparently early in the story, uh, the Sarah had brought a uh, black boy home with her, which there's the whole kind of, um, a racist thing there about, Oh, it's a black, it's a black guy. It's like, 
you know, that's, that's totally unacceptable too. And indeed they do tell the father about that and that has bad repercussions. Um, but it's like, there's always that monitoring. We're always monitoring this, uh, Sarah, this girl. And that it's funny that like, you know, it's funny, but it's like, it's almost, it's understandable that she's at work and it's like, it's the only place she's alone that she can actually, uh, kind of indulge in her own, her own sexuality and have access to, you know, stuff that should be, it's private, should be private. But unfortunately she picks a place where she's being ironically place where she's being filmed. So there's, there's a lot of surveillance going on in this story. And it's one of these things of like how much, uh, surveillance there is, uh, in, in our lives, uh, how much, um, that can get used. It can use, get used by family members, employers, um, possibly in the case of, uh, Nora at the end, that's like, that could be the state coming in. That's like, that's getting prosecuted for doing something like that. Um, and it's, I mean, it's something that's a crime. It's, it was inex it's inexcusable for that character to take advantage. It is taking advantage of, uh, somebody who is mentally ill at that point for their own, uh, their own desires which is, uh, yeah, it's really reprehensible. So yeah, yeah, that was, um, it's funny. I, I was kind of cool on the story as I was reading it, but it's one of those stories. The more you talk about it, the more you think about it, uh, the more it kind of goes up, goes up, has gone up in my estimation. So yeah, that was Complicit by Khalidia Venus Hassan uh, in uh, puritanmagazine.com. More videos later.